So there's been a big discovery at the LHC. Uh, they've discovered a pentaquark. Well, actually, they've, they've discovered two pentaquarks. So not one, but two. It's like buses. They've uh, two come along at once. This is a, an object of matter that's built from five quarks. So what we're familiar with before now are things like protons and neutrons. These are examples of things called baryons, which are made up of three quarks. So in the case of the air, the proton is made up of two ups and a down quark, and the neutron is made of two downs and an up. They don't just have to be ups and downs, they can be charmed, strange, uh, top and bottom quarks, and this gives the sort of heavier cousins to the, the protons and the neutrons. There's also familiar things called mesons, which are made of two quarks, where you have a quark and an anti-quark pair. Those are the sort of the familiar stuff. But you can, and it's been theorised for over 50 years now, that you could have bigger objects. And what they've discovered at the LHC is uh, finally they found an object which is made up of five quarks, a pentaquark. There have been evidence in the past for tetraquarks as well. Uh, this, is, this is all ongoing. Uh, but yeah, we now have a five quark guy. The one that they found is built out of uh, two ups, a down, a charm and an anti-charm. Anti so um, it's a charmonium pentaquark. And what does that then give you? If three quarks give us a baryon, yeah. what do five quarks give us? They give you a pentaquark. <laughs> That's what they give you. That's what it's called. It's, it's, it's a completely new type of matter. So, I mean, one thing we don't know, and, and that obviously as they do more and more experiments at, at the LHC, uh, they'll try to establish. We, we don't really quite know how these quarks are binding together inside the pentaquark. That's something that they'll try to, to, to learn, you know, by, by sort of doing more precise experiments at the LHC. I mean, could it be that it's like a sort of a baryon and a meson sort of combining to form like a, a kind of giant quark molecule? Or is it that they're actually really tightly bound in a completely new state of of five quarks. This is relevant to what was going on in the early universe, the states of matter that you might have found in the early universe, and also the states of matter that you might find inside neutron stars. So now that, so, so when we think about, you know, very, very dense objects like, like neutron stars, where the neutrons are all packed together, it becomes theoretically possible you start to wonder what other states of matter can form inside that neutron star. And now that we're seeing pentaquarks forming, we now sort of have this real possibility that you can have these multiple quark states that are actually forming inside stars and you can maybe even think about quark stars and things like that. So they're very unstable, uh, they would decay very quickly. Uh, that's probably why it's, it's been hard to find them. It's been criminally hard to find them actually. Uh, but it's possible that some types of, um, like I said, that you might find some inside, deep inside uh, neutron stars. We talked, when we were at the LHC, we talked about how the LHC could be destroyed, right? And uh, we talked about strangelets. Uh, strangelets are sort of states of large number of quarks. Um, in that case, the, uh, you know, one of the relief that we might have is, is that the one that's been found at the LHC is actually, um, is actually a charmonium pentaquark, so it's, made of, it's, it's more charming. Whereas the strangelets, of course, are sort of multiple states of quarks that involve strange, strange quarks. What's the point of making these exotic, weird things that fall apart straight away? It's a bit like an architect making some crazy shaped building, taking a really quick photo of it and then it falls apart because it can't stay up under gravity. It, like, you could go and make any crazy thing, but that's not how the universe works. Well, well it, it, no, but I mean, they only fall apart in the conditions in which you see around you. They only, they only decay very quickly. There might be other conditions where they're more stable. And in fact, Indeed, in, deep inside maybe a neutron star, the possibility is that these things could, could be much, live for longer. It, it's telling you something about how, how the strong force is, is interacting, how you know, the details of how that's working. That's telling us something fundamental about how things bind together in nature, how matter forms. Matter, you know, if the only type of matter that you see around you are mesons and baryons, and that sort of tells you, is that it? But now we're saying actually there's more exotic objects that we know exist. But they don't exist. You kind of just stuck them together with blue tack for half a nanosecond and thought, quick, 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 look, take a picture, and then it just broke apart and you went, oh, well. Well, that's not really the case. We don't really know how, how they're stuck together yet. That's still a question that we're trying to answer. You know, how, how are they bound together? I mean, what, one of the, the sort of nice little stories that goes along with this, this old pentaquark tale is, is how the mystery of, uh, of where they were. I mean, they were postulated like 50 years ago by Gelman, the great Gelman. Where have they been? They've taken so long to find. In the mid 2000s, there was this discovery, in inverted commas, of something called the Theta Plus Pentaquark, which is more of a strange one. And uh, 
you know, there was, it, was, it was a five sigma result, which is a very sort of powerful result. And there it is about, you know, it's one and a half times the mass of the proton. And, and this, there is this, uh, this pentaclock and it was hailed as a great discovery. But then it turned out that it wasn't a discovery at all. You know, repeated experiments, experiments that were more sensitive, went out and looked for this pentaclock in the same place and couldn't find it. And it's kind of, it sort of died. The pencil quark went away. And uh, it's almost like people are now nervous, experimentalists are like nervous about finding pencil quarks because of this, this story from the mid 2000s about the, the pencil quark that never was. Um, actually, the, the guys at LHCB that, that discovered this one, they weren't even looking for the pencil quark. It sort of found them. And in fact, when they, when they found it, they were uh, a little bit nervous about it because of this sort of history that pentaquarks have. This is a nine sigma result though. This is now as, almost as certain as it, as it can get. Um, but of course it's still, somebody else needs to go out and find it as well. But uh, now that we're starting to find them, you might expect there to be a whole flurry of them, a whole flurry of new particles appearing. You know, you can even start going to hexaquarks and, and all these sorts of things. You know, really you're opening up a whole new game of of quarks and different types of matter that, that could exist. So basically what happened is, as usual in the LHC, you, you smack two protons together. Now what happened in this case was those protons, as they, as they smack together, they form something called a lambda B baryon. What is a lambda B baryon? It's basically like a heavy neutron. You take a neutron, you trade one of its uh, down quarks for a, for a bottom quark. Okay, it makes it a bit heavy. It's like an exotic heavy neutron. And this, basically this lambda B guy, then decays into a proton, a kaon, and something called a J psi, which is like a meson made up of charm quarks. What they noticed was that there was a resonance in this, in this decay process. There was a little bump. And that bump you would normally associate with, with a particle. And it was a particle which whose mass was about four times the mass of the, four and a half times the mass of the proton. And actually, actually when they tried to fit the data properly, it, it didn't work with just one uh, pentaquark. They actually needed two pentaquarks to fit the data, which has actually cast some doubts on the result in, in some quarters because it's like, are they interpreting the data correctly? It, it, one might have felt it's a little strange that there were two rather than one pentaquark there, but uh, they're talking about a nine sigma result, which is pretty, as good as it gets, really. We can only dream of that in cosmology. And again? So we had to stop digging somewhere up here. And hold the walls in the table. Class act. Let's see what happens here. Steve? Yeah? Could you please close the mud? Maybe there. 